This month at the Thomas Crane Public Library in Quincy Center, it's an exciting program about genealogical research, a guide to Massachusetts record repositories, special presentation by professional genealogical researcher, Michael Brophy, who's here right now to tell us a little bit about himself and about this presentation. So Michael, welcome to the, to the show and welcome to QATV. Very good. Good to be here, Joe. Great Thanks for you. having me. You're very welcome. Welcome to Quincy. Uh, but not your first time here, right? No, I, I've given several presentations at the Crane Library uh, before it's been a few years, but it's always always great to be here in historic Quincy. Yes, yes, yeah. uh, we'll talk about that too. But tell us a little sure. about yourself first, if you could. Well, I'm a I'm a historic researcher. Uh, I do genealogical air searching. Uh, I find missing and unknown heirs to estates, as well as I do historic research. Uh, specialize in Irish research in particular, which I'm sure there are a few here in Quincy as yes. well. <laughs> um, and I, I specialize. Uh, in that particular ethnic group, but do others as well, too. I am a part-time uh, adjunct college professor at Bridgewater State University and Massasoit Community College oh, as okay. well, too. So I do teaching as well as genealogical research. How did you get into that field, Michael? I'm just curious uh, what drew you to it. Well, my, uh, as far as genealogy or yeah. teaching? Genealogy. Uh, genealogy. It was funny. Uh, back in 2001, I had a, a beloved aunt died on my mother's uh, side, and a cousin of mine did uh, a, a history book on, on her life, and hmm. it got uh, my dad and I kind of curious as to what um, our family history was on my father's side. Mm -hmm. And when I got into that conversation with my dad, he said, well, not much. We don't know much about our family history so it kind of got a father-son project going okay. which is kind of unusual because uh, family history research is sort of dominated by women mm. but in our case it was a father-son project and we sort of spent a few years doing the research uh, on an amateur basis and uh, I, we loved it and we found out a lot of history uh, of our family history on our father's side and and a few years later I did a lot of studying on my own, went to several conferences, and uh, started taking on clients a few years after that and opened up my shingle in 2004. Yeah. yeah. How is it uh, that you go about your research? You know, how do you look into someone's past, basically? What's the process? Well, it, it's starting basically with yourself mm -hmm. and working your, working your way back methodically, using records that are online. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, the online research has gone made by has gone it by leaps and bounds. Exploded, yeah. Exploded in recent years yeah. as well. And that's a good start. Yeah. Uh, and that's, of course, ever expanding every day. Uh, but also using uh, record repositories, of which we have a wealth here in Massachusetts, which is the subject of my talk. You know, we, it's an incomplete job if you're only relying on online research and DNA, okay. which is very popular now, right. um, to, do, to do genealogical research. So... Um, you know, record repositories can't be uh, avoided or uh, ignored when hmm. it comes to complete genealogical and family history research. So a repository is, is what, Michael? It's basically a record repository in which paper or textual records are, are used to do research. Okay. As, you know, as an example, you know, right here at the Crane Library, uh, I'm sure there are lots of manuscript records as well as vital records and published record histories, mm. family histories. Uh, for the city of, of Quincy, sure, yeah. um, as the, we have a, the oldest genealogical society here uh, in the country, in the New England Historic Genealogical uh, Society on Newbury Street in Boston, oh. people call it the Hisgen, sort of we old-time genealogical researchers, uh, 99 to 101 Newbury Street, and they house all kinds of original records as well as published family histories, okay. naturalization records. Th these repositories actually have been around for generations, uh, you know, in, in many, many, many years, but now with uh, the advent of online research where it's available to the average person in their electronic device, um, yep. people are taking a renewed interest in it, but it was always there, right? The, in the information was always there. Yeah, I yeah. mean, the information is, is there yeah. in the repositories and, and of course as we say more and more is going online yeah uh, but most of the experts in the field say that about 10 to 15 percent of genealogically relevant information is online okay and there are several small percentage a very small yeah. percentage and and yes more and more is coming online every day yeah but 
um, for reasons of privacy, for legal oh, sure, reasons yeah. of copyright and all that, s most of that is never going to be online. Okay. Think about recent vital records, birth, marriage, and death records, yep. which are totally open here in Massachusetts. Right. Those aren't going to be online due to privacy reasons. I see. Um, think about probate records as another example, uh, things like divorce records yep. and estate records and things like that, yep. that for privacy reasons are, are open to the public, but why would we make them accessible to everybody in Massachusetts? I see. I mean, they're kind of private records. Okay. Um, older deed records, which are very expensive to put online. Uh, most of them are pretty much online for the last 20 years in Massachusetts, but older ones are, are, are tucked away in repositories, contain a lot of good genealogically related information as opposed for, for land records and yeah. things like that. Okay. So again, those are, those, we have great records here in New England as opposed to other parts of the country where there's been significant record loss. Oh, really? I'm going to run through uh, a number of the major record repositories in Massachusetts that can cover Massachusetts ancestry. Okay. Um, I mentioned the New England Historic Genealogical yep. Society, uh, the Massachusetts Archives, which is located up on Columbia Point, uh, which covers, again, all of Massachusetts. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to be covering uh, the Massachusetts Vital Records Office, which contains, again, sort of the building block of genealogical research, birth, marriage, and death records, as well as some divorce uh, index, a great divorce index that they have there. Okay. Um, a great record repository that very few, little, very few people know about is the American Antiquarian Society, mm. which contains a, a, a statistic that blows my mind is two-thirds of the published material published in this country before 1876 is housed in the American Antiquarian Society in Worcester, Massachusetts. Wow. Um, That's astounding. Yeah, yeah, and it's been documented as such. Because so it can go back to the 1600s here in Massachusetts, right? Right back to the Mayflower. That's right, yeah. And uh, that is a national repository, not wow. just a Massachusetts repository. So to me, anybody who has, uh, is, is from a well-established family in this country, which you know, we here in New England are, right. um, is, is negligent in their family history, in my view, if they take it seriously, should be visiting the American Antiquarian Society out there in Worcester. Okay, and good taking to know. A, taking a trip, uh, you know, a little over an hour from here out to Worcester. Sure, yeah. Um, you know, there's the, you know, if you have Boston ancestry, which so many of us have yep. here, you know, the Boston City Archives is a great place to, to visit. And okay. That's, that's, I'll be covering that uh, in, in my talk oh, as well. Oh, all right. And if, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah and, and as well as if anybody has general, that you know, topic. It's going to you know, be my next question, yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if, somebody, yeah, if somebody has general, uh, you know, brick walls or questions about yeah. their genealogy, the, you know, I'll take those questions at the end. Okay. We can huddle afterwards and talk. Okay. I mean, okay. Everybody's got, you know, a question about a ancestor of ill repute or some questions <laughs> you know right. about about this ancestor or that ancestor right. who's you know I can give them some ideas and, and talk to them afterwards okay, as well. Okay. So I'm happy so to do that. You're not going to do uh, personal family research that night. No. But, but you'll give them avenues and directions to go in if they want to explore. Sure. A few own. tips here and there, too. Okay. You know, okay. I, I'm not going anywhere afterwards. That's I, don't, right. I don't have another appointment <laughs> okay. you know, afterwards. As well. uh, do you do these often, these kinds of public presentations? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I do them nationally. Um, I, I did a talk out in Minnesota and Kansas City out in... Uh, in September and October. I was just at the Boston Public Library oh, okay. last week giving an, an historic talk. Um, I'll be out in St. Louis in May giving a, a talk at the National Genealogy Society oh. that you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Um, I was at the Randolph Public Library uh, last month or okay. so. Got right. some others coming up. I'd have to look at my calendar. Sure. To, get the, the general feel. Well, I think it's something everybody's interested in is their, their past, you know, it, it yeah. kind of helps them define who they are and where they, where they fit in the puzzle. Yeah. Uh, and maybe look ahead to the future too. Yeah. I think it gives us a sense of identity and, yeah. you know, a, 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 another view upon yourself. Right. I think it's, I think it's interesting and <laughs> fascinating. Do you warn folks that, uh, you know, they maybe want to be careful about what they find out because it might be some things yeah. they didn't know about yet? <laughs> yeah, don't ask the question if you don't want to know the answer. Right. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> yeah. You can't change the past, right? It's, it's, it's there in black and white. It yeah. is what it is. And that's right. And you don't have to share it with anybody <laughs> if, you, if you don't, uh, if you find the answer. That's right, it's, it's, yeah. You know, you can 
Keep your lips <laughs> tight if you like to. <laughs> Thanks for coming by, Michael. Have a great presentation here in Quincy. Really yeah, appreciate it. I'm looking forward to a it. A guide to Massachusetts record repositories. If you'd like to learn more about this or any programs at the library, go to their website. It's thomascranelibrary.org.